Nature Patch. My name is Robin and thank you for joining in on another Sunday weekly garden wrap up video, I suppose is what this is going to be. It is a beautiful overcast Saturday afternoon and um, it is beautiful at the property I'm at, but we are currently in a three day lockdown in Brisbane, which will hopefully end on Monday. I know it's nothing compared to what a lot of other people are going through with uh, their lockdowns. And to be honest, I was going to be staying home and in the garden most of the weekend anyway, but that has just solidified my plans. So I am here and I have been outside in the garden pretty much all day today, on and off with some of the rain that has come. This week in Southeast Queensland, the rain has been absolutely beautiful, which has really helped uh, where I'm at in the garden right now in terms of preparing a lot of the beds behind me and planting as well. So for this video and pretty much all of my videos, make sure you have a cup of tea or a coffee or whatever beverage you like. I'm opting for a peppermint tea today. I absolutely love this mug that Scott got me for Christmas. It is absolutely beautiful. And I thought I would touch on a few things that I did throughout the week in the garden. This week has been pretty busy preparing all of the garden beds behind me. Where Scott and I have been planning them all out, measuring them and digging some swales throughout them, which are also going to act as pathways for the four main long garden beds that we're going to have in this vegetable garden. So we spent a few days doing that job just because digging with the mattock gets kind of hard <laughs> and um, we wanted to break it up a little bit, but thankfully now we have all of the garden beds marked out and what we were doing was walking along in a fairly straight line and we were digging about 20 to 30 centimeters down and then piling all of that soil onto the side of where we were digging out that line. And then I came through and filled in all of those swales with just a little bit of mulch and that allows for any water that is going to be retaining in those swales to last a little bit longer and not evaporate straight away. Thankfully we had some rain so we got to test out how those swales worked and they're working really, really well. I do have to dig out a little bit more on some of the sides just to make sure um, that the overflow goes to the correct places. But overall, the design is that down this slope here that we're going to minimize the amount of water flow that comes down. We wanna capture it as it goes down. And that's why implementing swales is a really great idea if you are on a slope. They not only act as kind of containing that water in one area, but they're also nutrient sinks as well. So as the nutrients and uh, compost and whatever topsoil you may have might slope down with um, water movement, those swales are then in place to capture all of those nutrients that can then slowly filter down into the bed below it rather than pretty much just running down the whole hill that we're on here. So I think we did a pretty good job with those swales and I'm really excited to get planting now. Throughout the week as well, I harvested some of the bicolor corn that I was growing in the raised beds. They turned out really, really good. There wasn't full pollination on the cob, unfortunately. And to be honest, I wasn't really expecting that considering that we had moved house. Um, we'd gone through 40 degree days and just ridiculous weather conditions for plants to be really happy. But I'm really glad that we did get some corn from the plants and it was absolutely delicious. I always forget how sweet, sweet corn is. It's really surprising just picking it straight off the plant and um, then having it for dinner. Just how beautiful the taste is and and if you've never grown sweet corn before, I'd really, really highly recommend it. It's pretty easy to grow. It does like a lot of water though. So now's a good time to get them in the ground. If you were wanting to grow them because we're getting a lot of rain around this time. And another thing that we have been harvesting a lot of this week is fresh blueberries from the blueberry plants. So I've got two blueberry plants. They're a high bush blueberry and they are growing in pots at the moment in slightly more acidic soil as that's what blueberries tend to prefer. And we are getting so many gorgeous plump blueberries from those plants that that I'm now saving and freezing to make some fresh blueberry muffins. Blueberry muffins are definitely one of my weaknesses, so I'm very excited to make some of those. And it's just a really, really nice therapeutic process to go outside and pick the blueberries every morning and obviously have a few snacks along the way. <laughs> but I've really put the harvest of the blueberries down to how we managed those blueberry plants. And that was giving it a really hard prune during the later winter months and then Coming into spring, we were feeding it a lot of worm tea, worm castings and coffee grounds as well. So all of the fertilizers were free that we were using and the blueberry plants have seemed to really respond well 
to how we've been treating them so I'm definitely going to be doing the same as it comes into winter to get another beautiful harvest of fresh blueberries. So this afternoon what I'm going to be doing is planting a few plants in the garden beds and just kind of pottering about I suppose. I don't really have a set list of what I want to be doing. I just want to get stuff done in the garden. I actually made a really big mistake over the past month or so with my worm farm and I was complaining to myself all the time about not getting any worm tea out of the worm farm that we have and then realized this morning that I had had the tap turned off the whole time. So just before I spent about an hour cleaning out the worm farm because it had basically flooded unfortunately. Uh, the worms seem to do okay though they don't mind being wet they just move up through the worm farm but I have so much worm tea now to be using which I cannot complain about. I'm definitely going to be swapping some at a food swap Fingers crossed that we can still have that going ahead in the next few weeks. But I've also just been feeding every plant on the property, um, all of the worm tea and just diluting it about maybe 10 to one. So one part worm tea and 10 parts water and just giving everything a really, really good feed. Uh, because there's so much growth right now with a lot of the plants with the weather, some of them are actually struggling with not being able to draw up a lot of nutrients just because it has been so wet. So feeding your plants with worm tea is a really, really great option right now to make sure that they're growing, but they're also maintaining the nutrients at the rate of growth that is happening right now. I've also got a bunch of worm castings now. This is just one of about three buckets of worm castings that I'm going to be using um, when I plant the plants in the garden bed here. Because I've dug out the swales now and there is a little bit of mulch and decomposition going on in there, the worms will actually have somewhere to retreat when there's not enough food in the beds. So right now it's quite bare in the soil, but even putting worm castings in that has a few worms in, the worms will be able to go into those swales and stay there um, while things are decomposing in the other beds, such as the grass and um, any extra compost that we put on. So I'm going to get planting and um, do a little bit in the garden and I will share with you what I get done. Definitely make sure to like this video if you like these kind of garden vlogs. It really does help me out a lot to know which videos do better and it also just really helps my channel to grow as well by having some interaction between all of you wonderful people that watch the videos and myself who sits behind a camera standing in her backyard alone and um, talking to a camera and also and also I love reading all of the comments in the comment section down below as well. First I'm going to enjoy my cup of tea a little bit and then we'll get planting. That took longer than expected in between raining and getting a cat off the veranda about to jump down. But I planted half of one row. The aim of this whole garden bed really is to plant um, as much as we can in this smaller space, I suppose. And so instead of doing rows of one variety, we'll be interplanting between um, taller species and shorter species. So it's kind of the same food forest, I suppose, design where you have an understory, middle story, and the kind of canopy layer. So behind me here, I just planted this right here. 
basically the planting style of this is to follow pretty much a no dig style so I basically dug a hole for each of the plants obviously you do need to dig a little bit when you're planting plants and that is putting the plant in the ground and I was digging the hole and then each of the holes had a little scoop of the worm castings that I harvested this morning and then once I planted the plant in there I put cardboard over the top so that any kind of grass wouldn't come up and that could also decompose over time as well um, and then mulch over the top so the cardboard obviously isn't kind of open to the elements and then the mulch on top of that cardboard um, will help decompose the cardboard as well okay so I ended up getting cut off uh, yesterday when I was trying to film there were a few distractions around but it is Sunday afternoon now the next day hopefully just before I upload this video and as I was saying in the last clip the mulch is really crucial because we have grass all around the vegetable garden behind me so we really want that natural barrier um, to suppress the weeds in this area. I'll also just show you really quickly up close of what I planted yesterday. So I showed planting the marigold here, which was just a volunteer plant that I just picked out of the garden and propagated and I've just been deadheading it um, as it flowers in the pot just to increase the growth of it. But it's very happy here. And this is just on the edge. So hopefully it will entice pollinators into this edge of the garden bed and then the other plants that I planted in here um, this one I really heavily pruned back it's not the most happy plant but this one here is a jalapeno and it was producing a few fruit um, but it was in a really small pot so I'm hoping that this comes back okay and then I have three other plants here and these are all just volunteer capsicums that came out of the compost. So I've just pulled these out and planted them in and we'll see how they go. If they don't do too well, that's fine. They were free plants. Um, but in between these here for my kind of overstory layer, I suppose I'll be planting okra, which grows up to be like a really good sized bush that will um, protect this area here. And then we'll be planting greens on all of the outsides of the garden beds. And I've also got all of my seedlings on the go. Um, got lots of okra, almost ready to be planted out. Uh, lots of straw flowers, some parsley, a random pig face that I had in there. Uh, these would have just been um, the shallots that I was trying to eat and finish that we've had for ages. I'll probably just spread uh, the soil out of this pot onto the beds. And a lot of my tomatoes that I'll probably plant out next week as well. So you get to see them when they're planted. So that is all of that area. I think I might head up to near the pool area and show you what is going on around there. The other day I planted quite a few more seeds in that area um, where I planted um, just some greens and some more zinnias too uh, because that area gets a lot of shade and the greens will really, really like that kind of microclimate that we've created in there. So this area here is going to be all of the herbs and greens and some cucumbers as well. Uh, this is a work in progress, a hugel culture bed that I'm going to be doing a video on soon. Um, and this bed here has got a lot of our lettuce in it and some bush beans and cucumbers that were growing nice and healthy. Um, and I noticed do have some bug pressure coming. So I'll have to look into that. And they're just growing up these tomato cages turned upside down. Um, and then this is the bed that I uh, planted the other day, full of spinach and chard and lettuce and zinnias as well. So I've got these cicadas joining me now, so keep it nice and short. Uh, but this area here will be a really, really nice area um, as we're coming into winter to hopefully get some really nice fresh greens. So I think I might wrap up the video here. I really hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of what I got up to during the week and what we've been harvesting. I've also been picking some herbs as well. I do have quite a few different herb boxes down here behind me. So we are always thankfully picking nice fresh herbs and greens and now vegetables and fruit as well. I hope you're all having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. Definitely stay safe. And until my next video, happy gardening everyone. Bye.